Hello, brothers and sisters. I want to talk to you about The Walking Dead, the zombies. Now, I bet you're asking, there aren't any zombies right now? Well, I'm glad you asked, because The Walking Dead are the people who've already gotten the mark. They're going their day-to-day -day business, daily lives, doing what they want, getting what they want, when they don't even know what exactly is going on, and they've been deceived. Now, let me tell you, God's chosen people, almost all of Israel, the Jews, have gotten the mark of the beast. Now, God let Israel and the temple be destroyed once before, and he'll do it again. I mean, yes, pray for Israel, but almost all of them have gotten the mark of the beast, and they're going to have to go through the tribulation, and then 140,000 are going to repent. Our salvation isn't dependent upon Israel. Israel's salvation is dependent upon Jesus Christ, and the Gentiles' salvation is dependent upon Jesus Christ and God. God brings judgment separately upon the different countries and his people. Okay, the Jews are not the ones who redeem us. God is the one who redeems us. Do you understand what I'm saying? Right now, almost all of the people in Israel are pushing the mark of the beast. They are of the devil right now. Is that redemptive? No. Don't hold Israel in higher esteem as the redemptive force for our salvation. Jesus Christ is our only Savior. Most of Israel rejects Jesus as the Son of God and their redemptive Savior. The only intercessor that forgives your sins is Jesus Christ. And in Jesus Christ, the body of Jesus, the Jews and the Gentiles come together as one. I mean, yes, God's judgment comes upon the whole world when his people are not doing what he wants, just like as they're doing right now. And in scripture, it says that these things must come to pass. My dad got it, and it's a death sentence. Unless they repent, or they go through the tribulation, and they make it through, or God provides a miracle for them and calls them back and shows them a sign, and they accept Jesus and they repent of what they've done. You're looking at dead people right now. Right now, these people are on life support. They are literally on their last legs. They might feel fine. They might, you know, go in about their day-to-day -day business. But in all actuality, they are condemned to death in the tribulation, unless they repent. And to think about it in that way is, you might have a husband or a wife who've gotten it, but you haven't. You might have family members who've gotten it. You see uh, people walking about in, you know, the stores. They might have gotten it. They're, they're the walking dead. I mean, you can pray to them. You can speak the gospel to them. But in the end, it's their choice to repent and God will take it out of them if they repent. But it's, it's sad, you know. Um, it's like you know somebody is going to die, but you can't do anything about it. Personally. You can only control yourself. You can pray for them. But it's... You know, when a family member dies, you're very, very sad. Anyone who's gotten the mark of the beast is on the tracks to dying. It's like you see them on a train and the train is headed to a cliff and there's no more rails holding up. You know that they're just going to fall off and crash and burn. You know, God extended his grace, faith, and mercy through Jesus for both the Jews and the Gentiles. And I bet there are a lot of Jews who still accept Jesus and the true gospel of salvation and go to, you know, their daily lives, you know, living for Christ. Um, but it's, it's kind of a mixture of both Jews and Gentiles who have gotten the mark or haven't gotten the mark. And I just see everyone being driven to their destruction without them even knowing it. God gave me a rapture dream of a grand banquet with every single food you could have on earth. We sat down and we had every single food you could ever conceive of on earth. And then he brought out a big roast and he said, here's the million dollar question. If you can guess what meat this is, you win. 
he took seven skewers, seven shish kebabs, with seven pieces of meat on them and placed it in front of seven people. One of them was a harlot in a red dress, and the other one was in front of me. Now a fat man to the left of me clamored to take the meat off of my skewer because he wasn't given a chance. And he leaned over to me and he said, hey, uh, I, I don't know what it is. And uh, I was left with a little sliver of meat. And I asked God, can I have it with or without sauce? And he said, it's your choice. So I took the little piece dry and I put it in my mouth and it tasted very musky. And I, the guy asking me what he thought it was, I said, I don't know, maybe it's giraffe? And uh, God said, well, it might be giraffe because most of the animals in the world are going extinct. Well, then my heart sunk. The last thing you could feasibly eat was human meat. It was human meat that was put in front of us. That's what's going to happen in the tribulation. People are going to start eating each other because all the food is gone. And seven skewers... wet or dry is the mark so the mark of the beast is the skewer do you understand what i'm saying in another dream jesus said i'll meet you in heaven for a cup of coffee another dream the rapture was happening i went up to my dad and i said hey the rapture is happening let's go and he said oh i was cooking pizza let's have pizza before we go and i said there's better food in heaven than pizza they were giving people incentives in order to get the uh, for free coffee, free pizza. In the UK, they were giving people shish kebabs. In my dream where God gave people wet or dry shish kebabs, he said the million dollar question. They were giving out incentives for million dollar lottery tickets. Do you understand what I'm telling you? All right, amen, God bless, and take care.